Indie Mogul. This week on Indie News, unpacking the gear that Griffin used on his documentary shoot, the favorite cameras of film festival filmmakers, and show off your Iron Man video skills in our latest contest. Hey Indie Mogulers, Griffin here. I just got back from Los Angeles where this last week I've been shooting key elements of my Sriracha documentary about this hot sauce. And this probably sounds different right now, right? I'm, I'm using the on-camera microphone on my GH2 rather than my shotgun microphone, which I normally use, but it's still packed in my bags. Many of you wanted to see a what's in my bag sort of video, so today we'll talk about the gear that I used on this trip, how I set up shots and all of that. But it went really well. I got 12 different interviews and lots of B-roll. I, I captured 16 hours worth of material, which I can't believe I got that much. It's a little bit misleading because I also captured audio on my portable recorder, so maybe I have 10 or 12 hours of footage. One thing that's really cool is before I even got back from the trip, I got word that there was already press coverage of the film. There's already an article written in OC Weekly about this film. So that's really cool that people are already talking about it. And a lot of that is thanks to you guys. Just you guys are talking about it and giving me so much great feedback. I mean, this is awesome. Just starting a project and already having people excited about it and talking about it. So let's look at what I brought on this trip. Let's start with the camera. Right now I'm filming this with my GH2. I thought about bringing it. My friend Nick, who is on my crew, he has a GH2. He brought it. We didn't ever use a second camera though. There just wasn't time. Uh, so I shot the whole thing on my uh, Panasonic GH3 right here. And I really shot just about everything on this one lens. This is a new lens for me. It's a Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter. Uh, and it has optical image stabilization, which is great. It's a constant aperture and it's parfocal, meaning that when I zoom this thing in, the focus doesn't change, the aperture doesn't change either, which is amazing. It's perfect for interviews. I can set up the, the shot, focus once, and change the framing without messing things up. But to get a lens that does all these things is expensive. Unfortunately, this is a thousand dollar lens, but man, was it worth it on this trip. I mean. I pretty much shot everything on this. Sometimes I needed more zoom. I mean, this only goes to 35 millimeters, so I was using that lens on this camera. This is a 14 to 140 millimeter by Panasonic. Uh, occasionally I use that. I also brought my Sigma 30 millimeter f1.4, which is great in low light, uh, but I really only use that for a couple night shots. I also brought my Panasonic uh, 14 millimeter f2.5. I didn't use it at all, but it's so tiny, this little pancake lens, so I brought it. Uh, I also brought a little, my little um, Tascam DR08 portable audio recorder. It's nice to just slip into someone's pocket. I have a little uh, lav mic here too. I thought maybe if I did some walking and talking. I didn't use this either, just because I don't like seeing a lav in the shot, which is why I was using my shotgun mic the whole time. I'll talk about audio in a minute. but. One of the things I did to control exposure was, on this camera, I wanted the shutter speed to stay the same all the time. I wanted the aperture really to stay at about 2.8, maximum, or, or yeah, maximum aperture on this camera, so I can get, you know, I kind of like a little bit of shallow depth of field, especially in interviews. So I've been using a uh, ND filter, and actually, I hate the plastic cases that ND filters come in, so I just took an old leather wallet, and I stick all my ND filters in here. So here I have, my fader ND filter, which just screws on the front of my, of my lens, and you can turn it and it changes the exposure. And this is great, especially for outdoor stuff, because I could be at my lowest ISO, but if I'm at my maximum aperture, and I, I just don't have anywhere I can go, I need something that can darken it. These, this is like sunglasses for your camera. So this, this came in really handy. This is by Polaroid. The other thing I did to control light is you know, we had one interview with uh, Craig Underwood, a farmer who grows the jalapenos for sriracha, and the sun was behind him. I didn't want the sun shining in his face and him squinting during the interview, so I actually put the sun behind him, but then, you know, his face would be shadowy. So one of the really helpful pieces of equipment I had on this trip, a pretty cheap reflector. On one side is a really reflective surface, which I never use because it like blinds the person. Here, I'll blind you. <laughs> and uh, here's just the uh, 
the softer, diffused side. When I fly on Southwest Airlines, I'll bring this suitcase full of like my clothes and maybe I'll put some bigger things like my, my shoulder rigging here, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but you can put this in the overhead compartment. Then you're also allowed another like small carry-on bag, like a purse or a backpack. And this huge camera bag still fits under the seat in front of me, so I'll bring that too. And then I also carry on my tripod. Uh, I usually just kind of hold it like to the side with my bag and no one is like, oh, that's another carry-on. No one seems to care. So I'm actually able to get all my camera gear, my uh, my tripod, and my, my clothes and everything without having to check bags, which is great. The one thing I couldn't bring on this trip, because I just don't have any more room, I was pretty much able to bring all of my gear, except for a light. You know, right now I'm using my DIY light, which is great. I would love to have this for interviews just to fill in. I mean, here, look, I'll show you what it looks like when I turn this off. Uh, here we go. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting sunlight right now. But <laughs> that's only doing a little bit. This uh, DIY light here is doing a lot of the work. So I would have loved to have that, but can't bring that. So I went to Sammy's Camera, one of many places in LA that rents gear, and I got a Kino Flow light, which is fluorescence. It's like a bank of four two foot fluorescent bulbs which sounds pretty simple, and you can build something like that yourself at, at relatively low cost, but, you know, this is a fairly nice light, you know, they, they control the, the color temperature well. Uh, this thing could go for like a thousand bucks, but for a one-day rental, I did most of my interviews outside, like with the, uh, the, the bounce, uh, the reflector for light, uh, but I knew I was going to be doing a couple interviews inside the factory where they make Sriracha, and I, I thought I would probably need some extra light, and I'm glad I, I got it. But that only cost me 65 bucks for the whole day. Uh, I actually got to pick it up the day before and drop it off the day after, uh, but it was just a one-day day rental. When it comes to audio, shotgun microphone right into my uh, camera using this adapter, uh, if the interview wasn't super important, if it's just like a stranger. Uh, for all my important interviews, I was recording audio directly to my Zoom H4n recorder. Uh, so I'd have the camera on a tripod. Uh, for those interviews, my best friend Nick was on the tripod, and I was sitting just next to the camera, holding the microphone, having the person talk to me. Because when you're interviewing, like right now I'm a narrator essentially, I'm looking into the camera. But if you look off camera, that's kind of your standard interview look. It's, it's like you're quoting the person. On one of our outdoor shoots, while I was holding the microphone and Nick was uh, monitoring with headphones, he noticed that we were getting a little bit of wind noise. So it was good that I brought my, my dead cat windscreen, which you can put right on top of the, uh, the shotgun mic to protect it from wind. So this was really helpful to have as well. Uh, also in this bag, I have my GoPro Hero 3, which I never ended up using. We were just so busy uh, capturing everything just kind of the normal way. I, I never found a use for that. I never really had the time. Let's see what else I got in here. I also have, oh, in here I have releases. I have uh, a talent release and a location release that I had people sign. I'll go ahead and put the text of this in the description of the video so you can just check it out. But I'm no lawyer, so this may not be perfect. Uh, in fact, I invite your criticism or comments on it if you have any better language. I'm sure you could write more airtight language, but I don't want a release that's four pages long and looks intimidating. So, you know, these are helpful. At least I've proved that these people, you know, they did sign a release. They, it, it'd be hard for them to prove they didn't know I was shooting them or something. Uh, so that's always helpful to have. I made sure to get those from, from everyone. In the top of the bag, I have a hat because I uh, sunburn very easily, especially on the top of my head. Um, headphones, very important. Okay, let's talk about my workflow uh, for data. So I have a, uh, a one terabyte hard drive right here. I brought on this trip maybe five SD cards, which each hold about 45 minutes. And like I said, somehow I captured like 12 hours of footage or something. So obviously, even that is not enough cards to last me for the whole trip. Uh, and I don't want to just have my data on the card. You know, if the card breaks or something, then I'm screwed. So I brought a laptop with me, and after each day of shooting, I would pop in the SD cards. First thing I would do is copy them, just copy the SD card straight onto the hard drive. That way I know I have a, a copy of the, you know, just the, the source files. Then I'll 
detach the hard drive, open up Final Cut on the computer, and go ahead and import those files into a Final Cut format. I mean, it's pretty much the same H.264 file, just it's going to pull them off the card and store them in its own uh, structure, uh, uh, directory structure. But uh, then I have it on this hard drive, and I have it on this hard drive, so if something were to happen to one or the other, uh, I'm okay. And now that I'm home, I'm going to back all these up to the cloud, too, so these will be online as well. But at least after I backed it up in two places and double-checked it, I was comfortable erasing each card and, and moving on. Finally, the, the last thing I want to show you that I brought was my shoulder rig. A lot of stuff I did on tripod, but it, it's nice having a shoulder rig, especially for, you know, kind of run-and-gun interviews, just so that my arms don't get tired. So I'm actually using a reflex rig, which is by a couple guys in Ohio. And these handles are really cool. I think this is what's pretty innovative about this rig, is you can unscrew them with one hand so you can adjust them uh, very easily. Now, I just put a quick, quick release plate on top of this uh, so that I can get my camera on and off real quick. And I did a weird DIY modification to this rig. My GH3, I can't send it in for repair because I, I need it, but the cold shoe adapter on the top where you might mount a shotgun microphone just broke on me. So I needed a way to put a microphone onto this thing. And I also needed a way to kind of adjust it uh, pretty easily. Like if I'm doing an interview by myself, I might put the rig way over here and point the camera this way and tell the person, hey, look at me. That way uh, it'll be a nice interview shot on this. And this is a nice way for me to hold that. Uh, but then I need the ability to point the microphone that way. So I actually took a gooseneck microphone stand. This is the same stand that uh, you could see it in my last video about uh, recording voiceover. I added a mic clip on both ends. It's screwed to the rig here. So now I can actually take the microphone and put it into this mic clip and point it wherever I want to point it and get it just out of frame, but you know, point it over here, point it over there. And uh, this works pretty well. Uh, nice little uh, DIY hack for this rig. But this worked really well for me. It's lightweight and uh, gives me a lot of stability. All right, so now we're back to our normal microphone and lens situation that you're used to on Indie News. This week, IndieWire released the results of a simple question. They asked filmmakers at last month's Tribeca Film Festival, what camera do you shoot on? They also asked this at South by Southwest and Sundance before that. So I merged the results of all three film festivals to determine what are the most popular cameras across the board. Coming in at number three is the Red Epic. Number two is the Ari Alexa, which is used by 13% of these filmmakers. And the number one camera used to shoot these kind of films is the Canon 5D. That's impressive considering it's the cheapest of the bunch. So recently on a live show, I guess a week and a half ago, I announced a contest and now I'm formally announcing it. I just saw Iron Man 3 finally and we have a couple Iron Man 3 posters to give away. And I know many of you have the skill to put together some interesting Iron Man themed videos. So if you can come up with anything that's less than a minute long um, and get it to me by the 12th, Wednesday, June 12th. As long as you get it to me anytime that day, I'll start watching them on the 13th. Just email me a YouTube link at mogulermade at gmail.com. Put Iron Man in the subject line. But just anything that's inspired by Iron Man that uses the effects or props or, you know, anything that, that you feel comes from Iron Man or, or somehow is inspired by it. And, you know, if you've already made something, that's fine too. As long as you made it, like after the Avengers and before this Iron Man 3. You go ahead and send that in or chop it down to a minute and send it in. And uh, I guess the best two or most interesting two videos will award the posters to. So get those in. On today's playlist, I have several videos you'll enjoy. The first one is a Western made by the people over at Makeshift Movie Makers. And there's some interesting uh, muzzle flare effects. You could be the judge if, if, if it's good or not. Up next, I have a teaser for this year's Jameson First Shot. You may remember last year, Russell got to interview Kevin Spacey. And this year, Willem Dafoe is their, uh, is their guy that, that's uh, going to star in these short films, or already has starred. So those films are coming. You should check out this teaser. It's, it's pretty interesting. I also have this week's new and notable video contests. 
And if you missed it, here is last week's episode of Indie News. While I was gone, something happened. Uh, there were technical difficulties. I think many of you got to see it, but if you missed it, check it out. It's a DIY mic shield. Right now you can hear all this reverb, but add this mic shield and it gets rid of it completely. So thanks for watching and man, am I out of breath after that one long take. I'll see you guys later.